There we go. Now we just gotta wait for this window to fire up. Okay, and done. There we go. All right, I think we've got everything nailed down for the most part. Congrats to everybody who um, has figured out the whole American weird daylight savings thing. But I'm glad to see you folks here. Tomas says, have a safe trip. I will. I mean, it's about a two and a half hour drive, so it should be okay. But still, it's a good idea to have a safe trip, I think. Uh, good morning from Gilbert, Arizona, building terrain for 80s Dungeons and Dragons cartoon minis. Nice. Uh, Steven says, hope to see you there. Morning from Lake in the Hills, Illinois. How you doing? Nick says, good morning from Rockton, Illinois. Ten more days. Yeah, ten more days. You're not wrong. <laughs> it's, it's not enough days, maybe. I don't know. Howdy from Oklahoma. How you doing, BF Bulldog? Hope you're doing well. Good afternoon from Kent, England. An hour earlier today, nearly caught me out. Yeah, it's the tail. We we do our we used to do our daylight savings time the same time everybody else did, and now we we don't uh, for reasons I don't know. Um, but yeah, let's see here. Good day. Almost missed the start. Forgot about the time change. So I'm hour behind and everything today. Yeah, or I'm a hour or I'm an hour and a head. I don't know. The cats haven't realized it yet, so they did let us sleep about an extra hour because they thought it was 5 a.m., but it was actually 6 a.m., but um, anyway, uh, we'll see how long that lasts. Let's see here. Mikey R., how you doing? Jared, howdy. Fonty, good morning. Red Jack says, I'm here, though. Good, good to hear. Friendly Neighborhood Inquisitor says, good morning from Rhode Island. How's it going today? Not so bad so far. It's a actual blue sky and sunny, which is nice. Um... This whole last week, I was in Louisville, Kentucky for the Gamma Trade Show, the Game Manufacturers Association Trade Show, and uh, it pretty much rained the entire time we were there. It was cloudy and icky the first day, and then just rained the rest of the time. And then I got home on Friday night, and it was raining here, and I was sad. So uh, now we've got at least got a blue sky looking today, so it looks like it should be good for a while, which is nice. <clears throat> Good afternoon from cool and gray Berlin. How you doing? Uh, Liverpool, England. Can you get snarl overseas plus back issues? Well, there's only one issue so far, uh, and it's only a PDF. So yes to both. So yes, this is a sn this is snarl, and it says well, you can't see it. It says first first issue right there, um, and it's PDF only. So you can get it anywhere on the planet. And then if you want to print it, you can print it. Or if you don't want to print it, you don't have to. There's two different versions of the PDF. There's one that's a single page for each page. And then there's another one that's laid out um, like in spreads like this. So you'll have the cover on this side and the back cover on that side. And then you print page 2 and 27 and you put it together. There's it, It's, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's available. And you can go to snarlingbadger.com if you would like to find out more about all of our titles. Um, Thought you guys had abolished DST? Yeah, I thought we had too. There was so much talk about it, like, oh, Congress is going to take care of it. Congress isn't going to take care of crap. It's not happening. Um, I think it's, um, you know how like normally things you're like, oh, we really want this. The American people really want this. And then Congress is like, well, but, you know, big oil gave us a bunch of money. So, no, we're not going to do that. In this situation, I think it's either big time, the lobbyists from Big Time or the lobbyists from Big Sun. I'm not sure who decided let's not do that or if it was just the inefficiency in general that decided let's not do anything. One of the two. Coming in hot this morning. Um, good afternoon from Overcast, but dry, I'll avoid. Well, that's good. Overcast is fine. I don't like rain. I, I was actually having a conversation with a woman on the plane. We would both rather it snows than rains because you can brush off snow. So... Um, Let's see here. Morning from Kansas. Morning from Italy. Morning from Mid Michigan. Did you get any of the snow this morning? Do we keep it all? I think you guys kept most of it. We got nothing over here, so that's I'm okay with that. Uh, joining in from Kansas City, Missouri. How you doing? Look forward to seeing you at Adepticon and hearing about Gamma. Absolutely. At home with a sick kid, so I actually get to catch the stream live. Well, that's that's. I mean, it's not good that your kid's sick, but it's good that you get to be here for live. That's nice. Cats and time changes can be brutal for you, indeed. 
Morning from Hudson, Wisconsin. Thanks for the one page rules recommendation. It's a great system. I chatted with their community manager a little bit at Gamma, and I'll be chatting with the main guy there. His name is Gaetano. Uh, and and then the community manager and the other guy whose name is Doug, but I forget his title. But I'll be having a meeting with them at Adepticon, which I'm looking forward to. Morning from Australia. How you doing? Uh, Southern California, ready to start painting my Tau Riptide. Nice. Glasgow, Scotland. How you doing? Uh, Dardanup, Western Australia. Beautiful priming weather today. Well, that's nice. We had some beautiful priming weather last week. No, two weeks ago on Tuesday. And so I actually primed all of the terrain that we're going to be using uh, for tanks for the apocalypse. And then yesterday I went through and kind of touched up all the primer with my airbrush and then started doing color blocks and stuff like that and everything. And um, I actually blew through an entire entire bottle of Army Painter. It's a color called Crow Hue, H-U-E, and it's kind of a dark gray. And I used up an entire bottle of it on the, on the terrain, so I had to go. Uh, luckily, there's a place in town I could buy some more because I wasn't completely finished with all the with all. The, like, I had one big piece of terrain left of three, but everything other, all the other pieces had gotten that particular pass. But I still had one piece left that needed it, so luckily I could buy it locally. Um, finishing assembly my Tomb King box. Nice. Uh, good morning. Painting four Sherman tanks with my grandsons. Nice. Uh, let's see here. Checking in from a tenny in Chile, Tennessee. Going with my father-in-law to the maiden flight of his new RC plane. Nice. Central New Jersey, or Central New York, uh, New Jersey. Better brush up on Space Station Zero since I'm running it for 11 players at Adepticon. Nice. Hi, hi from Slovakia. How you doing? Morning from Saskatchewan. Nice. Um, let's see here. It's March already, so almost April, May in all but names. So your new game practically here already. Spoiler, please. Um, we've decided we're telling people it's dark fantasy. That's our that's our um, that's our spoiler so far. It's dark fantasy. Um, that's not the title of the game. That would be that would be terrible. Uh, no, but it's a it's dark fantasy, and of course, solo and co op, and also you can play versus skirmish campaign, kind of like you know, it's got. We like that vibe of allowing you to play campaigns with small model or small amounts of models and, um, you know, be able to play solo or co-op and also against your friends if you want to. So, um, when printing out snarls, the zine, be sure to duplex print along the short edge. Yes, that is, that is a key. Otherwise it'll do the long edge, which in this situation, like on a page, this is the short edge and this is the long edge. And if it flips this way, then the pages will be upside down. But if it flips this way, when it's duplexing, printing both sides of the piece of paper, then it works out just fine. Um, I hate snow because it can be brushed off. It's called shoveling and I hate it. I mean, shoveling is, eh, but you don't, have, you don't have to shovel rain. But on the other hand, snow has, ne snow has never um, flooded my basement. So there's that too. Um, yeah. But if you're outside and it's snowing, like at one point I was like going from the hotel to the convention center and it was two blocks away, which I did not realize initially. Like when I first got there on the first day, like I got there late at night Sunday, went to bed, got up on Monday morning and I'm walking around the hotel. And finally I asked somebody, I'm like, where's the vendor hall? And they're like, oh, it's about two blocks that way. And I was like, yeah, no, but I mean, really, where is it? He's like, no, it's seriously, it's two blocks that way. It's a completely different building. And he was right. Um, so it's not terrible to walk, except unless it starts to really rain, <laughs> and then it's not so great, um, especially if you're wearing a white button-down shirt, and then you look all weird. Um, morning from Pittsburgh. Hope everyone's doing well. Crazy weather has my sinuses messed up. My back hurts, so I took the day off. Might work on some neck rounds at the back quite sound a bit. I think that's important, you know, if you're, if you're feeling well, you know. Morning from Orlando. How you doing? <clears throat> There's no money in abolishing daylight savings time, so not worth their time. How's that for cynical realistic? I mean, you're not wrong. Didn't even know time changed until you mentioned, thank goodness for phones automatically changing. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's always, like, three or four, like, clocks around the house that are wrong, like, on the stove and stuff like that, and I'm in my car. Um, but, yeah. Morning from a uh, chilly and foggy Juno, Alaska. Flipping through Space Station Zero and playing a crew based on, a, on those famous meddling kids. Nice. Morning from Valley of the Sun. How you doing? Morning from, uh, or hello from Munich. Love getting up at 5 a.m. pretending it's 6 a.m. Sure. Um, see, but the trick is, is when they think it's 5 a.m., but it's actually 6 a.m. because of the time change and they didn't get the memo, then it's not so bad. Um, got a notification that my Warpaints Fanatic box has a label, but it's not been shipped yet. I think they're 
shipping them so that they get to people's doors. In a perfect world, the idea is to ship it so that it gets to people's doors, I think, on the 16th. Um, so, yeah. It's primer weather again, at least every now and then, instead of never. Sure, yeah. It's told by my local GW shop. Uh, make your own Space Marine chapters. I think you brought it up, but surely it's about weapons, decals, armor. that You have to make the Marines you get. I mean, you can do whatever you want. It's your game. That's always the that's always the thing that's cool. Um, but yes, from what I understand, yes, you can make your own Space Marine chapters. Uh, like legally, whatever that means, you know, within the game. Uh, getting ready to play some Solo Sword and Space Weirdos this morning. Nice. Howdy, Chief. What's new? Um, the sunny skies. It's been cloudy for in my world, uh, like a week, at least. Um, also, I saw the new Dune movie, Dune 2, Dune Harder. Um, we went and saw that last night. I enjoyed it, but going to the movie theater sucks. There was somebody, there was a, there was a lot of chatter going on, which I could do without. There's a lot of people getting up and walking around during the movie to go get more snacks or go to the bathroom or whatever. I'm like, how did you not go to the bathroom just before the movie? Like, I, that, anyway, whatever. Um, can't wait to watch it at home then i'll enjoy it probably better uh i wish i could have watched it at home to begin with but anyway um yeah it was a pretty dreary week in louisville for some reason all of our tourism and conventions happen during the gray season it can be beautiful i think it's probably just because it's cheaper you know what i mean like you do it if you do it in the in the in the in the, in the good tourism series season then it's probably more expensive to rent the place <laughs> you know what i mean so i can understand that it's funny how, I have, how as many painters, we judge the weather on its relation to our ability to rattle cam prime. Yeah, that's no, true. It's very much like the case. Uh, second wintry Quebec. I learned yesterday that my car is not road safe anymore. What car would you recommend for a northerner? Uh, I've, I've always been a hatchback guy, but they're getting harder and harder to find these days. I've generally been a Honda guy for probably about, I think I've been driving Hondas for about 15 years or so. Um, Townsville doesn't have a lot of primer weather this time of year. It just rains, a, um, just a minute every day and remind, remains too wet to spray. Sure. Yeah. Hello from Connecticut. How you doing? Good morning from Lexington, Kentucky, working on some models for five leagues before seeing Dune later today. Nice. Morning from Idaho. Uh, I have three more combat patrols coming today. I think I have a habit. That's a lot of combat patrols. That's a lot of work, depending on the size. Like some of them are like space Marine combat patrols, only like 12 models, but some of them are, you know, like a lot, like. The Death Guard one has just has 30 pox walkers in it to begin with, and then a bunch of other stuff too. So uh let's see here. Morning from oh uh, uh, Idaho. I have three more. I just read that one. Uh Dark Fantasy sounds cool. Nice, nice. Glad to hear it. Um Good morning from St. Paul building some silicone molds. Nice. Do you use a pressure pot or a vacuum chamber for making molds? I know that they're, they kind of have sort of the same purpose, but different usage. Um, just, I got my missing part for my airbrush too. Well, going from Cleveland, messing with the new villainy inks on some flesh eater quartz models this morning. I got mine like a couple days before I left to go to Gamma and I haven't had a chance to mess with them yet, but I am looking forward to it. Yeah. I ordered the villainy inks as well. I'm looking forward to messing with them when I get the chance. Um, and one of the few areas we don't change clocks, so that's good. Well, <laughs> good and bad. I get it. Gaddis Gaming, how you doing? Morning from Charlotte. How you doing? Just got a copy of Population Z from Table Skirmish, Tabletop Skirmish Games. It's a nice little entry-level solo co-op. Uh, Lee's got a YouTube channel, too. Hmm, I don't think I've heard of it. Um, building the last few Marines for a Dark Age. Dark Age, no. Dark Angels. Uh, Combat Patrol. Nice. Getting to that middle of all middle ages, 50 in two days. Man, starting to feel it too. Yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. Red Jack says, I like skeletons. Skeletons are great. We all have one. At least one. Um, summertime, that's why it's one hour early. I mean, we're not yet to spring yet, but we're heading in the direction at least. So yeah, that's why it's one hour early. Soupy, uh, well, when you say summertime, you mean like daylight savings time, but you mean the time of summer. I get you. Yeah, it's not summer yet. I get you. I don't see you as a button-down, short-wearing kind of guy. Button-down shirt probably is what you meant. Oh, but yes, I'm not. Generally, no. It's weird for me to do it. Um, the only time, like, because I was wearing, I was there in the Army Painter booth, right? And so everybody else is dressed, like, nice. Like, well, okay, so the Army Painter booth this year was seven people. 
So it was four Danes from Denmark, one Englishman, and then two Americans. So the shortest person there, I think, was Ian. So Ian's English. He His name is Ian Huxley. He's been the editor of White Dwarf. I got a copy of White Dwarf back there. Um, for, I don't know, 15 years or something like that. And now he works for Army Painter. He's the head of marketing. Um, he told me all kinds of stories. We were, we were walking around at one point. He was telling me all kinds of stories about um, the creation of third edition um, uh, Space Hulk and fourth edition Space Hulk because he was project lead on those and stuff. And it was, it was, it was, a, lot, it was a good time. He's a nice guy. Um, so anyway, it's him. And he's, pro he's, he's shorter than I am. But then everybody else is at least my height or taller, and I'm 6'2". And they're all, the Danes, for the, for the most part, are all slender, except for Oliver, who is, like, buff, like, because he works out a bunch. So there's Oliver, who's a sales guy. There's um, Michael, who's the chief sales officer. There's the new um, CEO, whose name is Henning, and, uh, and then... And he's just been with the company for like a couple of days at this point, basically. And then there was the founder, Bo, who you've seen in a lot of videos. And then as far as the Americans, there's me. And then there's Adam, who you've also seen in a bunch of the videos and stuff like that, if you've been watching the videos on their channel. And so they all dress real well and everything like that. And I'm, you know, I'm frankly kind of a schlub. And so I don't know. I just, I, I feel like the last time that I wore a button-down shirt, um was the last time that I was at a trade show for Army Painter, which was back in September. So yeah, well, that's not true. I might have worn a button down shirt to like Thanksgiving or something like that. I don't know. But yeah, it's it's not my, usually my jam. Now, I only really wore the button down shirt like one day of the convention because then the next day I was like, well, if I'm on the factory team, I should wear my factory team jacket and a factory team shirt, right? And Adam was like, yeah, that's cool. And so we kind of switched things up. But, you know, like... Bo and this and you know head of sales and those guys and stuff they were all wearing the the regular like white shirt with the maroon logo this is army painter and all that kind of stuff and they're very fancy but I'm not I'm not particularly fancy I turned 50 in January it's not too bad well that's good good morning from Pittsburgh painting a black orc blood bowl team and weathering an epic scale titan not happy to be here today well we're happy to have you Working from Nova Scotia, just sitting down to listen and paint up a Tau Breacher team from the Start Collecting Box. Uh, finally finished the original Fire Warriors purchased in the 90s. Nice. Long hobby break. There you go. I need to inventory my Citadel and Vallejo paints and list them for sale in anticipation of the complete AP box. A Army Painter box arriving. Excuse me. Nice. I did that trick a bunch of times during the show, too, um, where I told people, because we had the, you know, the the complete box and I would just be like they look at that box and I'd be like that's eh, it's a lot of paint and they're like oh yeah I'd be like go over and just try to pick it up with one hand because it's like 18 pounds and so people would go over there just expecting it not to weigh that much and they'd just be like oh geez you know it was like that um it's like Thor's hammer um but yeah why I switched to airbrush far better to not be beholden to the weather yeah and that's normally the case, but for terrain, especially plastic terrain, I still like there to nice be a nice layer of rattle can as a beginning because that helps to, the paint to grip better. But for miniatures and stuff, because you generally baby your miniatures more than you baby your terrain, um, for miniatures, I have no problem just going straight, you know, airbrush primer and then going from there. But for terrain, I, I feel a little better, especially if it's terrain I'm going to take places like Adepticon and stuff like that. That's why I was really glad that there was like a day where it was like, 62 degrees and I was like oh awesome I'll go out there and quickly rattle can and I didn't even do it like I didn't catch every last you know millimeter of it like there's some spots I missed but that I can there are a lot of a lot of little overhangs and stuff like that so I could go back with the airbrush later and that's fine because it's real hard to scrape off the paint in an overhang area because you don't really touch it that much uh let's see here get a German car while you can mate give it a few years it'll just be a memory hmm Looking forward to the new Dune. Can't wait to go to the theater with a newborn without it becoming an awkward event. Sure. Have you ever played the Doom or Renegades? Both are great mini agnostic skirmish games. I own a copy of the Doomed. I think I bought it on Amazon because I couldn't find it anywhere local. Um, and I don't think I'm familiar with Renegades. But I haven't got a chance to play Doomed. I've just kind of, uh, you know, paged through it and kind of read it some. Good morning from Mexico City. How you doing? 
Morning from Nova. How you doing? Human factor has gotten in the way of me enjoying the cinema in the last few years between conversations, phones, and crying babies. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I don't disagree. No army paint, no army painter team hoodie. Uh, we have our army painter team jean jackets, the factory team jean jackets. Um, but I think a hoodie wouldn't be a bad suggestion. Working on some weird, weird World War II gaming scenarios to play with my group. Nice. Spent a pleasant evening painting buildings for steel rifts. Sometimes a session of terrain is quite satisfying or gratifying. Yeah, as I was working yesterday on the terrain for tanks for the apocalypse, I've got all my terrain for steel rifts sitting there in, the, in there too, and it's all primed. But it's not. I haven't got the chance to do the rest of it yet. I keep meaning to, but it's just yeah. So looking forward to it. Uh, probably post. Probably post launch of the game of our game uh, coming up in late May. Finally got to getting to play Majestic 13. What's your faction of choice for Majestic 13? Um, generally, uh, there's a part of me that kind of likes the um, religious faction. Um, the, I can't think of their name off the top of my head. I can think of the logo. I designed the logo for them. Um, the Sanctum. Sanctum. Um, generally, I think that's, one of my favorite, or Oh Dear, which is the first one, the, uh, I forget what it all stands for, but yeah, that one's also good too. Um, good morning from Luppburg, Germany, starting my phase two clone troopers and the halfway painted. Nice. Um, still waiting for March snowstorm that shuts down everything for a day or so. Uh, vaguely caught me out. I moved to Central Station, um, but Andy, Andrew, and the rest of the gang are awesome. Cool. Why do scale 75 caps break so easily? It's maddening. I've never really used their stuff, so I don't know. Um, bad plastic, maybe. Uh, as I get older, the fallback time change messes me up more. I wake up at 5.10 every day regardless of when I go to bed. Sleeping late screws me up for a whole week. Yeah, I'm not as good at sleeping late as I used to be, but there was a couple. There was a day. What day was it? Friday? No. Yeah, Friday. I ended up sleeping late Friday because we got... So the, the convention, the actual like trade show booth kind of experience was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And it was from 2.30 to 6.30 each afternoon. So not crazy long days like at a normal gaming convention, but still, you know, it's a decent amount of time. Um, the people who come to the trade show, like the store owners, store employees and stuff, they generally do a lot of seminars in the morning and then trade show, you know, walk around in the afternoon. And we, so as soon as it ended on Thursday at 6.30, immediately everyone starts breaking down their booth and packing up and all that kind of stuff. And the booth was, this booth was a 20 by 20 booth. It was a good size. So, and we have these three huge wooden crates that are on wheels that, you know, you load all the stuff back into and you have to take apart all this stuff and everything. And just, we got done at 9.30. So it was three hours of takedown and all that kind of stuff. And just got, I was just wrecked, tired. And I wasn't flying out on Friday until 4.30 or something like that. So, and my checkout time was, I don't know, like 11. And um, so I slept till like almost nine and then hopped up and showered real super quick and then went to breakfast with uh, Bo and Michael and Oliver. Ian and Henning had left the day before and Adam had uh, left earlier in the morning. Like his flight was like at four or five in the morning or something like that back to Louisiana. So, uh, let's see here. Use some vacuum for silicone, but pouring silicone, you can just put it in the fridge after pouring for a couple hours longer than pull it out. Make sure the mold isn't leaking first. Hmm. Oh, you don't want a bunch of that stuff in the fridge, I suppose. Sure, yeah. 45 this year, I'm slowing down already. I mean, it happens to everybody. Finally building my Rampart terrain from 2019. That stuff is nice. Well, it depends, I don't know. I, I, I got the, the urban stuff. The urban stuff is amazing. I didn't try any of the other flavors of terrain, but I really love the urban stuff. That stuff's awesome. Recently started some madcaps for uh, War Machine to experiment with life color paints. Hmm. Is that what WM means, War Machine? Hmm. Turning 50 wasn't bad for me. Your I turned 40 was awful. Well, that's a bummer. Painted all my Marvel zombie miniatures. Nice. Good morning. So what you're telling me is that I'm going to need a step ladder to talk to the army painter team at Adepticon. Does does it have one of those? Do you have to be this tall bars? It doesn't. They don't have a they don't have a thing that says you must be tall. It's just that they're all you know Danes for the most part, and they're all tall, except for Adam, who's American but also tall. Um, and then of course I'll be there sometimes. I won't be in the booth all the time. 
um, at Adapticon, uh, but at generally almost any given point of time, it'll either be I might be there, Sam might be there, who's taller than I am, uh, Eric from Eric's Hobby Workshop, he's about my height at least, and then Phil, the Glacial Geek, who is I think about six foot tall, so maybe a little bit shorter than me. Um, but yeah, we'll be all hopping in there, in and out all the time. So let's see here. Meeting clients is different, but I don't do that. Gotcha. In the architecture business, there were still folks who assisted on button down shirts when I started working in 2001. Nobody cares in the office. Sure. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I worked at a, at a not for profit and we had to, I had to wear like khakis every day, except on Fridays we got to wear jeans. And I'm like, this is not important. Need metal ink and effects paint, but otherwise I'm ready to ditch all the rest of my paints. Nice. I wear nothing but button-up collared shirts because I need to pocket for my smokes. Okay, well, that makes sense. A lot of people like to put their cell phones in the pocket too. I get that. Airbrushes are not beholden to the weather unless you rent. Oh, I was like, why would you rent an airbrush? I see what you said. Yeah. And so it shouldn't spray inside the house. Um, honestly, if you get one of those um, hoods, you can get them for about, I don't know, last time I, they used to be 100 bucks, but then everything got more expensive. I think they're about 120 or so now on Amazon. Um, and you plug them in, they're, they're portable, they'll fold up if you need, and then they're about the size of a briefcase, but you unfold it. And they'll have like the fancy ones, but maybe it might cost a little bit more. They even have lights on the inside, like LED lights. Um, you can use that, and as long as you're using acrylics, you don't even have to vent it outside, but it will, the suction will capture the extra particulate into the filter. Um, like I've been using the one I've got now for about two years down in the basement and I'm not venting it outside. I out the back of the machine, it's literally just blowing against a wall. It's got about that much space between the vent and the wall and the wall is painted wood and it's white. And I assumed over time I would start to see like a gray circle appearing where the paint that didn't get caught by the filter would get blown against the wall. And then I'd have to either repaint that part or wipe it off or something. It's nothing. I, yeah, I literally don't have any kind of, um, that filter evidently catches enough particulate that it doesn't matter. So yeah, it's been great. And it used to be that before I had that thing, but every six months to a year, I would need to take everything kind of out of off the table and then wipe down the table because it was covered in like paint dust and stuff like that. But that's all stopped because of that. Um, uh, if you just type in a probably airbrush, airbrush hood into um, Amazon, that would probably do the job. Um... Let's see. Good morning from Miami. 64-year-old noob. Not a problem. No artistic talent. Love to paint orcs. Thanks for the tips. Absolutely. Hate being late. Yeah, I'm not a fan of it either these days. I'm not being... I, I, I used to be late all the time, and now I'm Mr. Prompt, and I get nervous if, we're, if I'm going to be a little bit late on something. So, but welcome. How are you doing, Blake? Uh, I only go to independent theaters now. Most of the crowd are cinephiles who keep quiet during the movie. Well, that's probably a good idea. According from Pennsylvania... This year will be my first Adepticon. Nice. Very excited and hope to see you there. I'll be there. Morning from sunny Milwaukee. How you doing, Jesse? Yeah, it's sunny here too. Uh, hello from cold and cloudless Tokyo. Limited Godzilla activity to report. Well, that's good. Uh, Todd, our Gaslands game host for Fridays, liked my scratch-built sentry gun so much he insisted I sell them to him. Now I have to build some more for myself. Well, that's, I mean, you know, if you didn't want to, you didn't have to sell them. But, you know, if you make some money, that's always fun too, if you like that kind of thing. Um, let's see here. Nope, oh, everything moved. Um, where's Morph? Uh, very probably working because he very frequently gets off at a certain time and then the daylight savings, he probably, you know. Um, that was my first YouTube emote. Well, there you go. Back in the day, khakis were considered just as bad as jeans by the old guard. Ugh. Yeah, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. Khakis are combat trousers? I, no. Well, I mean, I suppose you could you could combat in them if you wanted to. I'm wondering how much the fan in the back of my box is catching. Yeah, that's a good question, I suppose. You can make an airbrush hood with a simple fan, cardboard box, and a HEPA filter. Yeah, or just one of those like filters that you get at the um, at the hardware store for your furnace, I guess. Yeah. I've seen people do that, too. That's true. Time for second winters here in Toronto. Oh, that's a bummer. Hang a piece of canvas on the wall behind my airbrush booth. I do enough airbrushing that it's fairly stained by now. Hmm. 
need to get one of those airbrush boosts. They're real nice. I should actually put one in my um, Amazon store. So when people ask, I just tell them to go there and take a look at it. But yeah, they are, they're real nice. I didn't have one for years and years and years and years. And then I bought one. I don't know. Excuse me. <clears throat> then I bought one sometime around the beginning of the pandemic, I think. Or maybe just before. Maybe just before. So anyway, um, yeah, I went to, like I said, I went to the Game Manufacturers Association trade show. It's called the Gamma Expo. Uh, and I was there. I flew out on Sunday last week in the afternoon. Yeah, it was about 4, 4.30 or so. And then I got there. Well, I had to fly from there to Minneapolis and then from Minneapolis to Kentucky. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, so... Um, I got there and late at night, probably around midnight or so, and then my hotel room was no problem, and that was all fine, and then the next morning I got up and figured out some breakfast, and then we started setting up the booth. Um, I wish, well, I think eventually we're going to get different, well, they're going to get different booth stuff, the Army Painter, as far as, like, right now it's like this crazy... Or, giant aluminum erector set thing which is very customizable which is great but everyone around us had those things where it's like just a simple metal frame like poles that you just put together and then there's always like a, a curved corner of this part and then it goes across and then a curved corner and then you just take this giant like spandex pillowcase with your artwork printed on it and you just stretch it over the giant you know 10 foot by 8 foot or bigger or whatever and then you just set it up and then it's done it's like it's real nice Full color graphics, all the fancy shenanigans. Um, this takes a lot longer to build. The upside, though, is that if you do want to kind of customize it and change the layout, which we sort of did on the fly, it's not so hard to do. So, um, but there was that, and then we had the four different Army Painter racks all set up. So there was the new Fanatic rack that stores will have that has all 216 bottles on it, and at the bottom it's got a bunch of like starter boxes and a box of just washes and a box of like just metallics and stuff like that. Um, and then there's the air paint rack, there's the tool rack, and there's the speed paint slash spray primer rack. So those are the, the four different racks. And this being a trade show, basically all the booths were manufacturers, publishers, distributors, stuff like that. And the people walking in, up, up and down the aisle were not gamers. I mean, probably a lot of them actually were gamers, but... What they were there mainly as uh, representing was generally store owners, store employees, stuff like that. So when you go to the Gamma trade show or any of these kind of trade shows, uh, most of the rest of the trade shows are put on by distributors. When you go to these trade shows, you kind of walk around and learn about new games and determine whether you want to bring these games into your store or these new paints or these new models or these new whatever. So, um, but... We, well, they, uh, Army Painter, again, I don't work for Army Painter, but I'm working with them. They sell these racks directly to stores. Well, not directly. Let me take that back. You can come to the booth if you're a store owner and decide, I want this rack and that rack. And then you will get a sheet and then it has information on it. And you say, I want this rack and that rack. And then you put in your information and the name of your distributor and you give it to somebody there at the booth from Army Painter. And then they will contact your distributor, say, this person ordered this. Okay, they'll take care of it. They'll send you a confirmation email. The whole reason you do it at the show is because then you get 5% off, I think, if you order one rack. And you get 10% off if you order two or more racks. So that's the benefit for those people. So a lot of what we were doing there was explaining to people, hey, this, like what I was doing was I was mainly sitting at a table and I was painting and showing people the paints. They could sit down. I'd give them the brush and show them, you know, and um, and that kind of stuff and the main thing I kept doing over and over again was like, so you've used Army Painter paints in the past, the the regular opaque paints? And they'd be like, uh-huh. And I'm like, when you, when I say ketchup water, do you know what I mean? And they're like, yeah, yeah, I do. And what I mean by that is if you haven't used Army Painter paints in the past, the old war paints, no matter how much you shook them, when you kind of squirted them on the palette, there would be the paint, but then this kind of thin layer of like extra like medium, like liquid around it. And then you would have to sort of like kind of, wiggle it around on the palette a bunch to get it to mix even more no matter how much you mixed it there was always just this extra little bit of fluid and um they always have had a great line of colors but the paints themselves have always been eh, you know they were inexpensive and they were frequently known as the budget brand but um 
So I would say to ask that question, they'd be like, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And I would take any one of the, we had one of the mega boxes open, not the big complete box. We had a mega box open. Mega box is like 50 bottles. And it even comes with a little uh, printed MDF rack, which is kind of neat, laser cut MDF with stuff printed on it. And so I would grab any one of the bottles and I would just shake it. And then I would just unscrew it and then squirt it onto the plastic pallet and it would come out and be really nice and creamy and there'd be like no extra liquid. And I would give them the brush and say, start moving around a little bit. And they'd be like, oh, okay. And then we had some models from Mantic Games and we would kind of just, you know, all that kind of stuff. And we had like a light and all that jazz. And it worked out nice. Um, so that was mainly what I was doing in the booth, but also answering questions, walking around once in a while and stuff like that too. So, um, so yeah, we set up on Monday. First day of the show was Tuesday. And then Monday night. Yes, Monday night. Well, Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night, they had uh, game demo night. Not in the convention center, but back at the hotel. So there was just all these tables. And if you were a vendor, you got a table, and then you could show people your product, your game, your whatever. And people could come around, and then they would get drink tickets from you for coming and trying out your game, and then they would go get drinks. Um, so we were just basically, we had a bunch of, we had you know, some palettes and brushes and paints and a bunch of models and just let people come by and, and paint and mess around and, and, you know, that kind of stuff. So I was running that by myself on the first night because everybody else was in a meeting, uh, a dinner meeting. And then the other nights, then I always had extra people with me and stuff. And it was, it was a lot of fun, but it was loud. It was loud in that room. It was kind of tight and everything, but it was loud. And I was just like, like every morning I wake up after being there from nine until midnight, I would wake up and I would be kind of hoarse, but it would, I would get over it eventually. Um, let's see, where am I at here? Gesundheit, I appreciate that. Traveling for two weeks, want to do some painting while I'm there. Do you have any recommended airline friendly bag to carry minis? I mean, I generally, if I'm going to be carrying minis, I don't carry minis on the plane too frequently, I guess. But if you do, I would say probably one of the better ones, honestly, in my opinion, is probably going to be Battle Foam. Um, I like the hard sides to those cases. Like they're still flexible, but the each panel and, and the, the, the sewn together case has got like a hard piece of plastic on the inside. So I would say probably battle foam. JP got rockets. How you doing? I need to get an airbrush. I like using unlike my current airbrush testers Aztec. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you do anything else at, other than the gamma show? Uh, we went and ate some food here and there, but usually only with a couple of blocks. No, we didn't go anywhere. Uh, well, I didn't go anywhere. Some of the other guys got there early and they went on some, distillery tour i think jefferson's i think they went to a jefferson's distillery and did the distillery tour some of the guys got there a couple days early but i got there like late on sunday night and on monday we were setting up so uh, i'm still trying to come up with a lean practical manageable hobby hobby travel painting kit the problem is inevitably bringing too much that really isn't needed i don't like to paint on the road i'll build on the road but i don't like to paint on the road i'm weird like that Louisville is my backyard. I used to go to Louisville all the time back in the day. I mean, yeah, it was it was nice. It was interesting to notice, like, the food that we had was good, but the service was always really slow. And I don't know if that, I mean, I don't, is Louisville, like, is Kentucky considered the South technically or not? I don't know. Because the guys from, some of the guys from Denmark were like, why is the, like, the food's good, but the business, like, the service is always really slow. And I'm like, I it's the south everything moves a little slower i don't know but i i'm not sure what it was um like there's the first place one of the first places i went i was like okay the service is slow here that's fine whatever the food's fine but then like every other place i went to was pretty much kind of the same uh did you get to check out the new halo figures as a matter of fact i painted one um dirt because it so Ronnie brought us this box, Ronnie from, from Mantic, Ronnie Renton. He brought us this box with a bunch of their like ogre type guys or whatever. And they were already kind of Zenithal primed a little bit. And he, I don't know, Bo talked to him and he brought those models over so that we could paint them for um, uh, demo night. Well, the demo nights, because it was three of them. And as I was like digging around the box, I like kind of peeled up this like layer and underneath it, there was like some foam, like battle foam type stuff. And there was Halo miniatures in there. Um, some of them unpainted, some of them primed, and some of them even painted. And I was like, huh. And I said to Bo at some point, I'm like, do you think Ronnie knows that he gave us a bunch of um, 
uh, Halo models that they literally just announced last week. There's a bunch of them here in the box. He's like, hmm, that's a good question. So we texted him and he didn't get a response because he was, you know, I'm sure that um, Ronnie was Halo was busy doing other stuff. So I just painted one of the primed ones, you know. Um, I just used like a green metallic and then I threw a, a, a like a strong tone wash over the top of it. And I think Bo took a picture and sent it to Ronnie. And then I think Ronnie was going to put it on social media. So somewhere there's a picture of me like painting a Halo mini and like looking at the camera or whatever and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I got to see a little bit of it, but not too much. Um, Let's see here. Louisville, Halo. Suspect you used the word creamy enough that it stopped making sense. A little bit. Yeah, I did say creamy. Although somebody else said silky and I was like... Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe, but I, I kind of like creamy better. Uh, any advice before releasing my TTG on Wargame Vault? Uh, your tabletop game um, on Wargame Vault. Um, I mean, obviously, you need to have play tested it a whole bunch. That's smart. Uh, proofreading. And then having it proofread again by somebody else, that's also helpful. We had that problem with uh, Rain and Hell. Um, um, what else? I would say probably also, I mean, people ask me all the time about like, hey, I want to get into game design. I want to you know, make games. Like, what, what should I do? Should I, you know, what kind of artist should I get? All that kind of stuff. And the thing that I always tell them first is uh, get yourself a following. You need to build an audience before you do that. Um, if you really want it to work out well. So yeah, that's that's a big thing is that, you know, just because you put it up on Wargame Vault doesn't mean that people are necessarily going to see it and it's going to set the world on fire. If you have an audience of people that you can talk to, then it will definitely help. Um, so that's something to think about for sure. But, you know, if you're about to launch it, launch it anyway, and then, you know, then start trying to build an audience from that and you've already got something ready to go. So there's that too. feel like I'm just a little, there we go, just a little bit underexposed. Uh, let's see here. Drink tickets for game demos? No, that's a trade show. I know, right? Like, usually it's like, oh, if you get in a certain amount of stamps, then you can go get, like, free product or something like that. But they were just like, no, dog, if you go up and just get a free drink. And I'm like, okay. So, yeah, that's what we were giving out. We were giving out drink tickets. It was not too bad. Um, used to go on long trips and made a kit from which I would make paper models. Nice. Did you get to Troll Bar for a meal? I don't think I know. I don't think I recognize the name. Kentucky is south for sure. That makes sense. I can paint almost anywhere as long as I have a good light and a decent sized flat surface. Gotcha. Consisted of a medium Plano box with tools, including X-Acto knives and glue, a plastic file folder to hold cardstock, and a 9 by 11 self-healing mat. Self-healing mats are real nice. There's a certain southern relaxed attitude in Kentucky and every restaurant is understaffed because, well, sure, yeah. So I, I didn't like blame the people because I have a suspicion they were either getting underpaid as most people are these days uh, or uh, just, you know, that's just, again, like that's just kind of the vibe. Everyone's just like not particularly hurrying. Um, but yeah, uh, Hope Trade Show was fun. I was wondering if you had a chance to check out the playtest rules for Trench Crusade. Um, I've heard of Trench Crusade, and I I think looked at some gra some um, I either looked at some models or I looked at some art or maybe both, but I haven't looked at the playtest stuff. No, for painting minis, I'd recommend one or two of the bigger Plano boxes. Sure, Louisville is more culturally Midwest than South. It's been called the southernmost northern city. See, I was wondering. It seems like it's a bit on the line. My experience in the south outside of major metro areas where most transplants move to service is generally slower. I mean, Louisville is not massive, but it's not tiny either. It's like, I looked it up. It's like a quarter of a million people, I think. It said 260,000 or something like that. Um, planes have a lower pressure inside and those paints can leak, so watch out. Sure. Victoria, British Columbia, how you doing? The hold the Kentucky Derby there? True. Only NASCAR is more of a South sporting spent than a Derby? Sure, that's true. Um, probably hard to find good staff. Yeah, it's... um, Yeah, it, it's generally one of those things where it's just like I, I very frequently I'm like, you know, 
if you don't pay much, you don't get much. That's kind of the way it works in many situations, specifically with staffing. But um, like no one was bad. No one was like, it was just always kind of slow. But there were several, like there was a point, where was it? We were at some place where like one of the guys asked for an Americano, which was on the menu instead of a regular coffee, got a regular coffee. Um, another person asked for an orange juice that they never got. Like, you know, just like a lot of things like that, just like little things. And I mean, I've traveled enough that I know to try to make it as simple as possible. I have a coffee and this breakfast as is. Don't want to go, oh, well, but no tomatoes or no this or because the, they're going to not make they're going to not remember generally in most situations. So I just try to be as low uh, impact as possible. And that generally works. But, um, you know, so. But for the most part, yeah, like I said, I enjoyed the food. Uh, I went to had uh, uh, Louisville style pizza at one point one night, and that was nice. Um, I enjoyed that. And then <laughs> I don't know what happened. So we're all sitting there at this place. And instead of getting like a couple of big pizzas and sh like everybody wanted to get their own pizza. So they're like small, medium, large and extra large. So like. We ask, like, how big is each? Because they don't say what the size is. So then they're like, guys, like, in inches. And man, when I talk about slow, like, that guy moved it, like, <sighs> he ambled. He ambled everywhere. I mean, it was it was fine, but he was an ambler. He did not move quickly in any way, shape, or form. You'd see him coming from the kitchen, and then you'd be like, could have more conversation, and he'd be halfway there. Um, and it was not a big place. Anyway, um, Long story short, everybody bought a medium pizza except for Oliver, who got a large pizza. We all should have gotten small pizzas. They were bigger than we thought. So um, I brought home, well, I brought home half of my pizza and then extra pieces of pizza from other people. And so I had a box. And by say home, I mean back to the uh, hotel. But I had a fridge. So like the next day after pizza day, uh, I got up and then just for brunch, in my, I just ate cold pizza in my room, uh, which was fine. It was actually quite good. Um, let's see here. Uh, you have good advice listening to you every Friday. Keep up the good work. Well, I appreciate it. Um, Steven Connors, how you doing? Thank you. Uh, love catching the stream while I finally get to play around with my foam cutter and launch my adaptive tabletop terrain. Ooh, nice. That's pretty cool. I saw a super cool tool at, it was from Micromark. Yes, I believe it was from Micromark. They had a booth there. And it was an ultrasonic cutter. And it kind of looked like a Dremel on a cord that went to like a thing. I don't know, it was some sort of doohickey, like a big kind of heavy-ish device. And you could put the thing in there, like to store it sort of. But that's the thing that was plugged in. I don't know. Anyway, and it was like a, it was about the size of a smallish Dremel and it had a blade on it that was maybe, I don't know, three quarters of an inch long. And he picked up a thick piece of acrylic, like that was probably quarter inch. And he was like talking to me and he just took it and he just like cut through it like it was kind of like a, a knife through butter. And then just, yeah, but it's this thing called an ultrasonic cutter. I asked him how much it was and he said $600. So I'm not picking one up anytime soon, but um, they also make one that's about 250 he says he doesn't think that one will cut through MDF, but it would cut through lots of other stuff. Um, but this big one would cut through MDF, acrylic, lots of jazz. It was, it was, I'd never heard of an ultrasonic uh, cutter before. It's pretty cool. Um, let's see here. Hello from Northern Ontario. I'm going to AdaptCon for the first time this year. Any tips about the convention? I'm super excited. Um, are you, if you're, are you staying in the hotel or are you staying in a different hotel? In either situation, I would tell you to try to bring some snacks. Um, the thing about Adepticon is, is that there's a couple of, hot, of hotel restaurants and also at night they will frequently set up like convention food and stuff like that, which is expensive generally more so than you might like. Um, but there's not like a place you can just walk a block or two to get a, a meal. It's kind of out in the middle of sort of nowhere a little bit. So what I would tell you to do is to try to bring, I don't know, trail mix, granola bars, junk like that in your luggage. Or if you're flying, or maybe you are, maybe you're not, maybe you're driving. Uh, if you're driving, um, definitely bring some things to have in your room, you know, beverages. Take that as you will. Um but yeah, it does, it does help. I which reminds me I have to buy some snacks before I go. 
Uh, the sad thing is I'm not staying in the main hotel this year because it's really easy to just pop your room, get some stuff, and then go back. And But yeah, this year I'm staying, unfortunately, because I couldn't get into the main hotel. Uh, main hotel sold out in 60 seconds. Uh, I am, where am I? I'm uh, like, I'm close. I'm like, I have to walk through, I think, two parking lots to get to my hotel, which is, you know, it's okay. Uh, Bardstown Road is the place to go for all the hip bars and restaurants. There was a place that we walked down to that was covered. Like the street was like a place you didn't drive on. And then it was covered over with like a big, huge, giant thing above. So you wouldn't get rained on and they were going to have live music. But we were there in the afternoon and they didn't because they were setting things up. Um, will there be any merch made up from Majestic 13 in the next game? Would love to cap up with my S. Uh, yes, uh, there will be. Uh, it's just not done yet. Um, it, that's a, That's a me problem. Um, but yeah, I do, I've got, I've got like half of the different factions from Majestic 13. I've got a shirt done for ha about half of them out of 13. Um, and so I want to get all those done and then launch them. But then I've also got to get stuff for the next game done and launched and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. Have fun at Adepticon hobbyists. Someday we'll get there. It's a fun convention. It really is. Um, let's see here. Here, parking is rough at the convention for Adepticon. Yeah, it can be for sure. Um, parking is a pain, but if you arrive early, it's no big deal. It usually clears out after lunch as well. Yeah, that's the thing too. Is That's another reason is that like people, especially if you're staying in the main hotel, like once I've parked, I'm not moving my car. People are like, oh, let's go drive. I've got my car here. We can go drive and get some restaurant food and blah, blah, blah. When you come back, you'll be parking who knows where. So I'm, a, I'm of the opinion in my old age, I get there on Wednesday, I park my car, I unload my stuff, I don't ever move my car again. So I'm not driving anywhere to get food. Um, I'm not there. I'm not there to go to restaurants. I'm there to be at the convention. Like there are certain conventions, like Nova is awesome because you get to Nova and then there are restaurants in every direction. Like you walk two blocks every direction, you walk past like eight different restaurants and it's great. Um, this place is not like that, Adepticon. It's like I said, it's kind of out in like a industrial park kind of area. And, um, it's kind of its own standalone thing, but I do wish that there were more restaurants. There used to be the one bigger restaurant. And then there was a bar that also served food. The bar is still there, but I don't think it serves food. Then there's also like a little coffee shoppy thing, which is okay. Um, and like I said, then they also have like concessions, but those are generally, not particularly good and quite expensive, but that's hotel food for you. Except for Vegas. That was so weird. I think I told that story about how when I went to uh, LVO back in January, I was like, you know, there was places, there was pl plenty of restaurants in the place. It was, you know, R Rio's got all the restaurants firing and they've actually added some more. And I was like, hey, that's great. But I just didn't want to have to walk all the way because from where the convention was to the tower where you would go up to our, my hotel room, someone uh, used a pedometer to measure it and it's a half a mile <laughs> and it's all through casino and stuff like that so I was looking for something close and they had like hotel concessions to, uh, set up right near the vendor area so I was like all right fine I'll, I'll grab some some terrible food for too much money and for ten dollars and like 75 cents I got more chicken tenders than I probably should have eaten and they were actually quite good they were really surprisingly good nice and hot uh, there was barbecue sauce and all that kind of stuff. Like I got a cardboard plate that was maybe about, I don't know, 10 to 11 inches square. And it was just covered in chicken tenders. And it was less than $11. And I was like, what happened? Where, where's, what's going on? It was the strangest damn thing. Um, yeah, and I didn't, that wasn't until like the last day. I should have been eating chicken fingers literally the entire day I was there. But didn't work out. But yeah, next year I'll pay attention to that. So uh, let's see here. Plan on being early since all my days start quite early, it seems. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. If things go as planned, I'll be attending Heritage Con. Well, that's cool. Star Wars Vibroblade. I mean, like a really tiny one, but yeah, kind of. Have you done or will do a full review of the Army Painter Fanatic Box when it comes out? If you've already reviewed it, what well, was a pro and con for the new paints? Um, I did do a video about the big 216 box um, like a month ago, maybe, maybe a little bit longer. Um, I just really like all the paints. Uh, they're the new material, the new medium, the stuff, you know, it just, it, it doesn't separate like it does. The thing that I've really discovered is that 
you want to take your brush that is just damp, not wet. You don't want to like get water in your brush so you can thin the paint a little bit. You don't want to necessarily do that, at least in my opinion. If you're making a glazer or something like that, then yes, of course. But if you're just like, I want to paint, you don't have to thin it like you do with GW paints so that it actually works um, and doesn't fill in detail. You just kind of dab into it and then you put it onto your model and then you just keep working it. You keep spreading it around. Like I painted an entire shield on this like orc kind of guy with like literally one dab of paint because you just, you have long enough working time, you can keep pushing it around and it keeps covering and it keeps covering and you keep moving it. There's a little bit of a, a tiny bit of a drying retardant in the um, in the paint that helps you to keep moving it around. Um, the cons, um, gosh, I can't think of anything real great that's a con, honestly. The, I love the color families, the different, you know, six color families, the flexible triads as they call them. Um, I think for me, I would like to see more like bone colors, like more, I don't know, I like tans and browns and things like that. And there are those, but I would like to see slightly more, I guess. Um, I think somebody said they would like to see more reds. Or oranges? I don't know. But I mean, you know, there's there's a lot more colors than there used to be, but still, that's, you know, you can't get all of them, I guess. Um, let's see here. I ordered two large pizzas when a new place ordered, opened up in town. Thought it was a bit expensive, but I went along with it anyway. They were 25 inches across. Oh, good Lord. That's, yeah, that is a large pizza. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm staying in a hotel nearby. Gotcha. Uh, good morning from snowy Columbus. How you doing? Between tabletop minions and Vince V, you two guys have upped my miniatures and model building skills dramatically in the last year. Thank you both. Well, I appreciate that. I will say thank you as well for Vince, who will probably watch this at some point. He has a tendency to. Haley, how you doing? Pizza is truly international food. I think so. Could be opportunity for a burger van. Yeah, they should get some vehicles to drive up and sell stuff outside. Like, that's what they used to have to do at, um, now I feel like I'm too light. That's what they used to have to do at, um, nope, wrong way. There you go. Uh, Nova. Yeah, Nova was uh, definitely, the old Nova was, you needed some place, some uh, food vans because they just, for some reason, that particular area where Nova used to happen, there was just no restaurants. Um, now where Nova is actually in DC at the uh, uh, Washington Hilton, there's, it's, you're, you're completely tripping over at restaurants. So they don't have to bother with that anymore. But yeah, that would be nice to have some food trucks show up at, um, at uh, Depticon. Morning from New Zealand. How you doing? Couldn't get the main hotel this year, sadly. Yeah, me neither. It sold out so fast. But I'm close by flying this year. Next year, might drive, but it's a 17-hour drive. Yeah, that's a long drive. You know, a, no, I don't want to do that. Food stands at the convention aren't that great. I mean, generally, food stands at conventions are not that great in general. But like I said, Vegas, I was surprised. Looked outside to see a gray, grim day. You know? East Peoria, how you doing? Sounds like we're in the same hotel, tabletop means. Could be. Afternoon from Puckle Church, how you doing? Depticon is the kind of convention where anywhere I'd want to go is at the vendor hall. Like, I try to see if I can visit FLGS when I travel, but they'll all be at the con, most likely. True. Very true. I was saying seven minutes away from the convention. Any food recommendations outside of Depticon? No idea. Honestly, I've never, I've never gone to eat. Well, no, I take that back. We went to, uh, we went to a steak place, I think, one year. A long time ago, I remember going, well, a couple of years ago, I remember going to a steak place once with like a client kind of thing. It was like a business thing. But other than that, um, there is a place somewhere around there that you can go where they bring out the meat on a sword and they cut you off pieces of meat, like the, it's a Brazilian barbecue. We went to a place like that one time too. But yeah, I don't, I generally don't do it too much. Like the big issue I find with that at, Adepticon is going to a restaurant, leaving the building, going to a restaurant is going to take a couple hours, maybe three, depending on how chatty you are. And that's hours away from the convention. Like I'm only there for like, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then a little bit of Sunday. Well, you know, first half of Sunday. Um, and I don't want to really spend too much time away usually 
from the convention because there's stuff to do and people to talk to and all that kind of stuff and everything. And so, yeah, that's for me, I don't know. I mean, if it's a meeting, it's a meeting. You got to do some things like that. But uh, generally, otherwise, I'm trying not to. I'm trying to just like eat stuff there and then get on to the next thing I, I got to do. <clears throat> um, let me see. Staying seven minutes away from the convention. I just mentioned that one. Next year, Adepticon is on my list. Just can't make it this year. Sure. I'm a Midwest bagpiper, and the Chicago Highland games are just outside the hotel, and that whole area is bleak for food. Oh, that's a bummer. I think there's a pot belly around there somewhere. I think. I could be wrong. My best friend was telling me about some amazing steakhouse not too far away from the Adepticon site, but there's really no time for foodie shenanigans running games from 10 a.m. through 11 p.m. That's also true. Also true. Can games from in Ottawa is a block from Chinatown. That would have been fun. I was gonna go to that last year and then it didn't, it fell through. Kuma's Corner is a good metal themed burger place in town. I think I've heard about that. I think they had a booth one time at um Adapticon. I think I remember hearing about that. I cracked a tooth. Oh, and then everything moved. Um, can games. I cracked a tooth on a chicken tender at Adepticon two years ago. That's not good. <laughs> yeah. The only like food that I eat from adept like from the hotel concessions is they usually have like burrito bowls in the evening and i've done that they're not great but they're not terrible um and then there's a it used to be called like sam and harry's and it was a super fancy restaurant that people would never go into because they thought it was too expensive but it was honestly not that bad um and then since the pandemic it's changed and now it's called like the schaumburg tap house or something like that and um, now the place is constantly packed, like just totally packed. But um, their stuff is pretty decent too. And then, like I said, there was another bar right next to that on that same floor that used to sell sandwiches and stuff like that. But now they don't seem to anymore, which is a bummer because I had a really good bologna sandwich there, like fried bologna. It was really good. Um, but that was probably, oh, I don't know, seven years ago. Like I said, that place has not been serving food since we got back to the convention from the pandemic. So... Um, let's see here. Hotel won't let food bands show up. They make money off the captive audience. Yeah, I guess that does. That makes sense. That sucks, though. Like, because, again, this is, the food's terrible. Like, the hotel, like, again, the whatever the tap house place or whatever, that stuff is great. It's just fine. The bar doesn't serve food anymore. Stupid, in my opinion. But the concessions are garbage. It's just like at, at um, Nova. We were talking about that, too. Like, the hotel has a concession area and it was like a $6 banana. And I'm like, if I walk a block in either direction, I'm going to go Thai food. I'm going to go Italian food. I'm going to go Mexican food. And it's all good because I've eaten at all of those places. I'm not buying a $6 banana. Why do you guys even bother? You know what I mean? It doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, brand new comer to the hobby after video games started getting stale. Understand that. Your video inspired me to keep painting even after my first Locust came out horrible. I mean, again, all the stuff that you start with is never going to be great. You know, I if I started to decide to play the piano today, I wouldn't be good at it until I, you know, practiced and learned. And then hopefully, you know, event over time started to get better. So, yeah, um, I generally suggest to people that you want to go and practice on models you don't like that much or you're not interested in that much. If you go out and buy like a super expensive fancy model and you're like, this is so awesome. I can't wait to paint it. And it's the first thing you ever painted. You're going to mess it up. You're not going to ruin it, but you're not going to be happy with the results most likely. So I would tell you to work on a bunch of stuff, kind of knock that stuff out, get brush control kind of under your belt, get understanding of how to much to how much water to add to your paints. If at any, you know, whatever, all those different things, but you have to actually do it to practice. Just watching a bunch of videos is helpful, but it's not, it's not going to get you, it's going to get you further ahead, but it's not going to, you, you still need to practice. Hopefully no one gets con crowded this year at Adepticon. People always get con crowded at every convention for the most part. Uh, so far, not, I, I don't seem to have anything knocking on window wood. Um, but yeah. Once every few years, I like to run a huge game with many models so we can get on the table. It usually results in pounding headache, but good for some laughs. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I've had that issue. Um, let's see here. Takes money away from the hotel. Yeah, yeah. 
See, that's the thing. That was what was so interesting is that they they did allow it at Nova. Like, I believe that in the old days, um, like they actually like there was it was probably usually four or five different food trucks right out in front. And I believe that the hotel or sorry, not the hotel, but the um, the event organizers were the ones that did that. And the hotel had a like one restaurant back in the day, that old place. Um, but that was about it. Hyderabad Palace is the best Adepticon restaurant. I've never been there. Hmm. What I really need is Amory Painter to let us trade in old paint bottles against the new ones. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't know if anybody does that, anything quite like that. We'll say, we'll say any gamer at Adepticon with time and transport would luckily enjoy an excursion to Games Plus. Games Plus and Grognard Games have had booths at Adepticon, but stores are worth a trip. Yeah, I've never been to either of those stores, but I've been to their booths. The Rosemount, Illinois is the name of the town Adepticon has held? Uh, no, it's in Schaumburg, I think, right? Isn't it in Schaumburg? It's the Schaumburg Renaissance Hotel and Convention Center, I believe is the official name of the place. <laughs> Kuma's Corner was packed when I went there last year? Yeah, I can see that. I, uh, yeah. Ultrasonic Cutter just sounds like a different trade name for Vibroblade. I mean, it's kind of. It's kind of what it is, really. I was pretty surprised. He was, yeah, he was cutting through, like I said, pretty thick stuff. I need a mom and pop's greasy spoon somewhere there. Yeah, that would be nice. Can I make a combat patrol at the Space Wolf's army that I have? I'm being told that it's not possible. I don't have the Mac that does. So, um, space or uh, combat patrols are very specific lists that they've designed. So, if you already have the models, like you can go on to warhammer communities website and look for the download section and there you'll find as you scroll down past a whole bunch of other stuff you'll find the combat patrol stuff there um so doing that you'll be able to find the space wolves combat patrol and it will tell you all the stuff that goes into the space wolves combat patrol and the way it's supposed to be built combat patrol back in the day used to be like some general guidelines and a point cost and that's what you had to do and you could build whatever you want nowadays combat patrol is like it's this army built in this way it's this force this thing this thing these guys blah blah blah. build it this way there you go um and that's to help try to balance it and to also take out some of the analysis paralysis that new hobbyists have a tendency to sometimes have when trying to figure out well what am i going to be doing here and that kind of stuff so it makes sense um but yeah that's that's the thing so if you like i've got friends who are like like look at the combat patrol box or the sheet or whatever and they're like well i have all that stuff already so i could just use that stuff and you're like yep or i have everything but i could maybe proxy this i'm fine with that too but you can't build your own combat patrol like list it's not the way it works anymore so yeah fried bologna sandwich one trick i like at home is to get a quarter inch slice of bologna from the deli counter and fry that up that does sound pretty good yeah no that it was a really good sandwich i had it a couple of years in a row um, have you heard anything solid about the Wednesday night content creator meetup? Uh, I know it's happening. I emailed the organizer and said I was probably going to be there. I think it's from, is it four to eight? I think, I think it's four to eight and it is okay. So the restaurant I was talking about, the tap house or whatever, there's the tap house and then there's the bar. And then kind of behind the bar, there is like a little coffee shop kind of thing or whatever. It's kind of in between those three things. That's where you'll find it, pretty much. If Adepticon is where they used to do games day, I know that steakhouse and expect 100 bucks a head. I don't think it is. I don't think that's where they used to do games day. But, um, well, I don't know. It's a good. I don't think so, though. I could be wrong. Kuma's Corner is pretty good. They also have a lot of chains with a five or 10 minute drive. But if you're driving, good luck finding a parking spot when you get back. That's the issue. That's always the issue. I think the projected high today is two Celsius. Oh, yeah. Watch to learn and then do to master. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Practice on easy things to start with some basic techniques. Start with skeletons or necrons. Learn to uh, dry and overbrush. Yep. Drink water. Oh, while you're in Adepticon. Yes, also true. Can Games in Ottawa, or did you mean the big Wargaming Convention out west? Can Games. I was supposed to go to Can Games. They were 
well, not they. Um, there was a company working with Can Games that wanted me to come and like be in their booth and stuff like that and whatever uh, last year, and then I kind of blocked it out. Luckily, I hadn't bought a plane ticket or anything yet. But then they they got back to me and they're like, "We're not going to be there because they're an American company." And like, it turned out the taxes were going to be like something like I don't know, like fifty thousand dollars if they wanted to sell their sell their stuff in. Canada or some sort of thing that they hadn't planned on and so then they didn't they weren't going and so then I wasn't going and stuff like that which honestly I'd like to go but I was just it would have been a really super busy month if I had so luckily it kind of you know made itself less busy morning from California hope you're doing well well I so far so good it's a car ride but there is an IHOP Ooh, okay maybe next year I can go to Adepticon for the first time Adepticon is a lot of fun absolutely Steakhouse was in Rosemont. Hmm. How are the kitties doing? Hey, Emily, how are you doing? Uh, the kitties are doing better. I think I might be the problem. So my wife, because I was, you know, concerned and wondering about how they, you know, how everybody was doing. And she was like, everybody is doing pretty well and is being relatively calm. And then when I got home on Friday night and then on Saturday, you know, obviously it was the full day being home then there was a little bit of shenanigans again. So I do wonder if I'm the one, I'm the problem, it's me. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. For the most part, people are starting to calm down. Rex and George are becoming better friends. There's far less hissing, uh, at least from Rex when George wants to come over. There's still, there's not none, you know, but there's still some here once in a while. But they also play. Um, my wife says she swears that she saw Maggie and Rex playing. So that's a good sign. Um, Carlson is still a scaredy cat, but he's also still employee of the month, employee of the month since 2016. Um, so yeah, for the most part, things are getting a little bit better, which is good because I was concerned. Um, things were real rough just before I left. Uh, there was just a lot of problems. So yeah, but things are doing better. Problem with the Combat Patrol downloads is they don't update them when codices come out. For example, Necron's Combat Patrol data sheets are different in the codex from the ones in the download section. They would be. Yeah, they're not supposed to be the same. Um, Combat Patrol data sheets are different in the codex from the ones in the comp. See, well, that's that. I guess I haven't seen a new codex to know that 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 doesn't make sense to me. Like if they're going to come out with the codex, I just didn't. I just didn't think that the combat patrol was going to be in the codex. But if they put the combat patrol in the codex, and it is different than the one, I don't know. I'm just going to play with the stuff that's downloadable. I don't. I'm not particularly concerned myself, but that's because I kind of don't care whether I win or lose. It's mostly important about whether I have a good time. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I wish that they were a little better about it. I, I like the concept of the combat patrols. I think it's a great thing, and I'm glad they're doing it, but it would be nice if they were a little better about it. Now, that being said, they are... they The fact that they're putting those combat patrols into White Dwarf... I made a video about how I was kind of surprised about it, and I've been even more surprised to see that they've done it basically every month now. So there was one in January, there was one in February. The February one's the Tyranids one, which... Seems like a sort of terrible list, but whatever. Just as far as like you need nine lictors or something like that. I don't know. It's really, um, or maybe it's the Von Ryan's leapers. Whatever it is, you need like a whole bunch of like one unit, and they're not expensive. They're not cheap, and so, yeah. Um, and then allegedly the March one's supposed to have a Inquisitorial Warband Combat Patrol or something like that, which that I'm actually very interested in. But the fact, I kind of figured they were going to put out one a quarter, but the fact that they're putting out one a month is sort of surprising. And I wonder how long they're going to do that. Be interesting to see if they're going to do it going forward, one a month or what. But yeah. Um, interesting, though, for the most part, I find. Um, and it'll be very interesting as well to see whether or not they do the same thing with um, the new version of Age of Sigmar. I think they would be absolutely stupid not to so they're probably going to do it they're probably going to do it right i i hope uh, let's see here six dollar banana glad i have a sweet corporate expense account i suppose i don't know the thing is it's a gaming convention like you know what i mean like a lot of the people there are not there on business they're there on having a good time so like if it's a trade show different story i get that um Although a lot of the people who are there at the trade shows are store owners and they don't have a sweet corporate uh, expense account. They have, 
you know, um, that it's their own money. Right. And so that's a whole thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Every time I have been to a convention, the organizers fed us and I was staying far away and that breakfast and dinner didn't matter. Gotcha. I created a monster by getting our cat addicted to mouse videos on YouTube. Hmm. Games Day was at the Stevenson Center in Rosemont. Oh, yeah, no, this is, um, Adepticon is in the, again, it's in Schaumburg, Illinois, which is west of Chicago. And it is the Schaumburg Renaissance Hotel and Convention Center, I think is the full name of it. It's a nice place. I like it. But it's too small now. Um, I feel like they're going to have to try to move if they want to expand because they, at this point, are at capacity. Not even just in the hotel, uh, you know, rooms, which obviously sold out in 60 seconds. I mean, they're at capacity. Like, there's no more place to put games and do stuff and things like that. So they're going to have to start looking for someplace bigger. Um, One free combat patrol list each. Hmm. Okay. Um, let me see. I wanted to say thank you for recommending the Eisenhorn audiobooks. Currently listening to the first one and really enjoying it. It's really good. I really like the Eisenhorn books and I really like the Ravnor books. I've had several people tell me I should read the Beckwin books too. She's a character in Eisenhorn. Um, I think she might be in, is she in Ravnor too? I can't remember, but I should probably check those out as well, but I, I haven't gotten this chance to do it yet. But yeah, they're very good. Good. Um, I have a couple things here I brought back, actually, from Adept or from Gamma. Um, not much, but because it's not really a gaming convention. It's a trade show. Um, so no one's really buying or selling. I mean, you can go there and say, hey, I want to order this. And if you're a store, like, you know, again, like I said earlier, um, Army Painter was selling these racks, you know. But for the most part, you didn't take the rack home with you. Now, that's that being said, there were... There were three uh, of the same Fanatic rack, Fanatic being the new line of paints. There were three of those racks in the booth. So there was a section towards the back where they had all four of the racks that Army Painter currently makes, Fanatic being one of them. Then over on one side, there was another Fanatic rack. And then on the other side, there was another Fanatic rack. So it was very easy to show people the new stuff. At the end of the convention, two of those racks actually got sold in, to stores who were like, yeah, we'll buy it and ship it and whatever. Um, so great. <clears throat> in the future, pretty much every trade show that we that, that that happens now that Army Painter does, they'll just have the four racks, where there'll be a fanatic rack, an airbrush rack, speed paint rack, and a tool rack. Um anyway, the two big things, big ish things that I brought back from uh the trade show is a copy of volume six of Blaster magazine. So Plaster is, it started, I don't know, pre-pandemic, I think. They don't, they don't come out super frequently, maybe once a year. The original Blaster magazine was put together by um, like Ash Barker. And um, it was basically like a bunch of add-ons for games that were already out there. Gamma Wolves, um, uh, Gaslands, um, um, this is not a test. Like, so it was by a bunch of different people. And so if you liked those games, then you could buy this magazine and then have an, an add on for those games, which is cool. Now Blaster has kind of changed to the point where it is basically like a, a small mini game per, um, per magazine from what I understand. Um, now the thing that's interesting about this one is that this mini game is, I've talked about a game that's coming out soon called Zeo Genesis. I'm going to be playing a Zeo Genesis demo at uh, Adepticon. They were at Adepticon last year kind of talking about their game. They, I bumped into them at Nova. It's a new kind of, um, it's kind of a robot mech game sort of, but instead of like Battletech where you're humongous and just a giant lumbering machine that's basically a gun platform, this is a little bit more anime. Like if you ever heard of, if you know from, let's say... Um, Infinity. Um, there are these things in Infinity called tags, which stands for something, but I don't know what. They're basically kind of robots that are probably about maybe 20 feet high tops, maybe a little bit shorter, maybe 15. That's kind of the type of robot that goes on in this game. It's a skirmish game where you're running around and you're jumping off of buildings and doing stuff and fighting and all that kind of stuff, but you're in a smaller robot suit and you're a lot more agile and it's a lot more of a quick and, and a game. 
the game Zeo Genesis is written by Gav Thorpe and Andy Chambers, where you may recognize those names because they both were big, huge authors for um, 40K and stuff like that. They were Games Workshop employees for years and years and years and years. And then Andy left and went to Blizzard Games, a video game company, and he worked, did a bunch of work for them. He did some work for Fantasy Flight. He's been all over. Gav has done kind of the same hopping around thing. But now they've gotten together and written this rule set called Zeo Genesis. There's an ad for it in here. So Zeo Genesis is going to be, I think, coming out this summer. But anyway, they're going to have demos at Adepticon. I'm going to be playing. I'm, you know, they're actually on the listing of events, and I signed up to run it to play a demo. This blaster episode or issue has a game called Slip Runners, which is a spaceship combat kind of preview in the world of Zeo Genesis, and it's also written by. Andy Chambers and Gav Thorpe. So, um, yeah, it's like a spaceship combat game, and there's lots of stuff going on in here and different scenarios. And I don't know, that lady's doing, she looks like a ship pilot, I guess. Uh, here's a big map of the known whatever. Anyway, um, but yeah, it's a spaceship combat game, and it's got cool ships that you, I think, can download and print maybe or whatever. Um, these are the different ships, or you can use whatever you want, obviously. Um, but yeah, so they gave me a copy of this to check out, which I thought was very cool. And then it's the same publishing company that is doing Hobgoblin, which is Mike Hutchinson's Hobgoblin. Mike Hutchinson is the guy who uh, wrote Car Wars. No, Gaslands, not Car Wars. That was Steve Jackson. I met Steve Jackson. I got to talk with him a little bit, actually, at the thing, which was nice. But yes. Hobgoblin is done by Mike Hutchinson, Gaslands. Now, if you know anything about this game, they had a booth at Adepticon last year. It's Rank and Flank, which I told the guys, I'm like, I'm not really into Rank and Flank. And they said, well, we still want you to look at it because, well, A, it's kind of awesome. The art is by a uh, English artist named Crom, C-R-O-M, who I really like his work. As soon as I saw the cover of the book initially, I was like, oh, I recognize that artist. But the book here is just really super cool and, and laid out well and, and really neat. It's got lots of awesome artwork and crazy shenanigans and stuff like that. So I'm going to still look at it and whatever. But again, it's a miniature agnostic game, but it's generally kind of rank and flank. Um, but I'm going to take a look at it. So those are the two main things I brought back. I also brought back a single model that a company came by and dropped off and was showing to some of us at to the Army Painter booth, and I really liked one of their models. And so he's like, well, I'll go get you one. So we brought one over. And um, it's... um The the model is called Fish Pope. That's all I'm going to tell you, uh, because I do kind of want to paint it on uh, on um, Twitch at some point, but it's pretty cool. So, um, yeah. Otherwise, I didn't really bring much home, because A, I just didn't have any luggage room, really. You know, there's that. And B, again, it's not that kind of convention. There are definitely people walking around on Sunday who are like trading stuff. They're like, hey, I'll give you one of mine if you, you know, the different manufacturers and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I just wasn't uh, particularly, didn't want to bring a lot of stuff home. Uh, let's see here. There are combat patrol lists in the codices that are not available for free otherwise. Huh, I didn't know that. That's weird. What do you think Henry Cavill is going to make for Warhammer 40K if he doesn't make Eisenhorn? Well, first of all, he's not making anything. I mean, I think he's maybe a producer or executive producer or whatever. But whoever makes it, if they don't make Eisenhorn, they've made a mistake. Any other story is not going to land with the general public. Eisenhorn is a crime drama. So, I mean, at its at, at its essence. So people like crime dramas. Law and Order was on TV for 3,000 years. So Eisenhorn, I think, is the only good choice. If they're like, oh, we're going to do Horace Heresy, you've lost nine-tenths of the audience who would give a give a crap about it because it's just going to be bolter porn. And yeah, it needs to be a more human story and about, in my opinion, some of the most human stories in the whole black library are the inquisitorial ones because they're basically crime dramas. And he would be awesome as um, Eisenhorn. I just think he would do a great job at it. So let me see here. Um, are you preloading your system with vitamin D and other things? I always, I take vitamin D every day anyway. They're little gummies. They're tasty. I like them. Uh, but I do that. 
Waiting for the third Beckwin book. I hate starting a trilogy before it's all published. Did not know it was all done. Interesting. I may wait a little bit then. Uh, at Gamma, they sell plastic crack by the brick. I don't know if they do or not. Indianapolis Convention Center is large enough for Adepticon. Well, it's large enough for Gen Con, so yeah, I suppose so. Or yeah, Gen Con's like 72,000 people. I'd support moving it there in large part because I live in Indiana and I wouldn't have to book a hotel. Well, sure, there's that. Um... I'll be honest, I I think it would be a smart move to move it to Milwaukee. And not just because I live in Wisconsin. Honestly, it's, you know, yeah, it would be a slightly shorter drive, but not a ton shorter. It'd be okay. Um, but Gen Con used to be in Milwaukee until it moved to Indianapolis in 2003. And about the time when it left, it was at about 18,000 people. So Gen Con or uh, Adepticon right now is only at about seven to eight thousand people, closer to seven generally, from what I understand. So it would give them tons of room to grow if they moved to Milwaukee, because then that way they would have all this extra, you know, um, space. They would, it would. I forget what the building's called. Back in the day, it used to be called the Midwest Express Center, and then it was called the Wisconsin Center, and now it's called something else. But that would be the facility where they would have the convention. And then you would go elsewhere. The The one downside would be is that right now, most of Adepticon happens in one building. A lot of people are staying there, not everybody. But when you want to get together and hang out, you're all hanging out and having drinks and whatever and messing around there in that building. That would be slightly harder if you were in a convention center that was not a hotel as well. And if you were staying in different hotels that were around the area. But it would also allow growth. And I think growth might be a little bit more important uh, to them, most likely. So, and there's lots of hotel restaurants and things like that around there too. So I think it would be smart of them to move there, but I don't, I don't know if it, I don't know if it's something they've even thought about. Um, let's see here. Wanted to give you an idea for terrain non-hobby item used cigar boxes, inexpensive online or at your local cigar bar. Sorry, off topic. Just wanted to share. No, I appreciate it. It's interesting. Fourth edition Age of Sigmar due out this summer, and I won't be bothering with it. Yeah, I'm sure it'll come out this summer because that's the time, you know, but last days. Oh, yeah, right, last days. I love Blaster and Super Dig Dead by Lead. Yep, yep, that was also pretty cool from what I hear. Uh, so is the TV adaptation of Eisenhorn different from the Henry Cavill thing? I have no idea. I, they haven't said a word about what's going on. They just said it's going forward, but we haven't heard Jack about it. I don't think we'll see it till 2026, maybe later. I dig animated mechs. Yeah, these guys are like the the stuff in Zeo Genesis has got a bit of a. So if you're interested, Zeo is spelled Z E O, and then Genesis is spelled Genesis. Um, but you can do. I think they've got a website. You can see some of the stuff there. Three year cycle has turned me off. Not buying it. One on one and done system. Yeah, no, I can understand that. The three year thing is too much too. Like I still think it should be five, but I don't think it'll happen. Sounds like Giga Robo. Uh, I feel like the, the mechs in Giga Robo are way bigger. They're like Godzilla type sized, I think. Or like Pacific Rim, you know what I mean? And these guys are way smaller. Like the Mel Elementals and Battletech, basically? Eh, maybe? Got hardwired rulebook and I'm working on a batch of cyberpunks. Nice. Trying to paint black ops style uniforms with color toned black paint. Any tips for very black saturated uniform to pop a bit? Um, I like to usually go generally go dark, dark gray. Like I'll do, I'll prime black. Like I did this on my um, Majestic 13 team. Primed them black and then Zenithal, not with a white, but with like a dark gray or even maybe a mid gray and then threw a lot of black wash over the top of them. And then, so it keeps them dark, but still there's some definition and things like that. And then go through and maybe put little bits here and there. Like if they're wearing like, tactical gear you can darken it maybe or you can even sometimes some of the buckles can be silver but the thing is is that like military people generally don't want a lot of flash because they're trying to hide sometimes you know what i mean like that's the whole idea of camo and all that kind of jazz so there's that crom's stuff is great yeah i've got uh, a book he did called bird king i've got the first volume i guess there's a second volume out which i don't have um but i, I really like it Speaking of Mike Hutchinson, I just got a got the book for A Billion Suns. Can't wait to get into it. Yeah, that was his space combat game that he did for Osprey. 
Um, let's see here. Do you use the silly putty trick for masking? It depends on what I'm doing, but usually, yeah. Um, yeah, generally, either silly putty or poster putty, yeah. Wasn't Krom Conan's God of Steel? Was it Krom with a C or a K? Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe. Law and Order will be on TV for 40,000 years. There you go. There's your Warhammer 40,000. Where to start with 40K with someone who doesn't know... Who does know the lore on it? Wait. Where to start with 40K with someone who does know the lore in a cinema big undertaking? I don't know. Cavill should be Harlan Nail. I don't know who Harlan Nail is. Oh, from... Oh, Nail from... Uh, right. No, uh, from Eisenhorn. Right. I was thinking of... A different main character. Yeah, he's not the main character. I think he could be Eisenhorn just fine. Like Eisenhorn is about forty-two years old, beginning of the first book. Like he's, he like mentions that he's forty-two two years old. Standard. I was just listening to it back in January on a plane when I was going to Vegas. Um, he's got dark hair, and the thing is, is then they could also age him up a little bit if they wanted to go further in the series and stuff like that, and that would be fine. It's way easier to youngen people up than it is to olden them up. I those I made those words up. Um, I've, I've always felt like Harlan Nail should be like m way more grizzled and not as maybe good looking. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, they do well to do adaptions of their horror series, but I'd love to see live action adaptations of any of the Age of Sigmar books. Yeah, I don't think they're going to do that. As much as I love the Inquisitor books, I love to see Kyphus Kane. Kyphus Kane, yeah, I, I've tried reading one of those books and oof, can't do it. Um, crunching for Adepticon right now, getting product for my booth ready. Nice. My FLGS is having a miniature moot today, playing uh, Frostgrave after. Nice. What scale of the Halo minis? Uh, about yay big. Um. And like, they're like basically like 32 millimeter scale. They're just, I'm sure that they're going to have some, like, because the Spartans next to normal humans are kind of tall, just like space Marines, like primaries Marines next to normal humans are pretty tall. Um, so I, I, I'm assuming it's the same normal scale, like 20 to 32 roughly. I think Inquisitor Draco from the original book Draco by Ian Watson was pretty good as a beginner's guide. I got a few followers out of it lending it out to my schoolmates. Gotcha. There's a blog article with pictures of a metal mold. So plastic zeogenesis minis. Yeah. I've been talking with Dan who's like kind of like, I don't know if he's the president or whatever, but he was the guy that was at the booth. He wasn't like, he's always been the guy at the booth. Uh, at Nova, I talked to him and Gav Thorpe. Andy wasn't there, I don't think. And I don't remember if Gav was at the first Adepticon. He might have been, but I definitely Dan was. His name is Dan. It's either Dan Block or Dan Bach, but it's something like that. Uh, nice guy. He is, and this is crazy to me, they're not going and getting molds made and having a manufacturer make the plastic. They're doing the injection molding themselves. Like Dan, I had a conversation with Dan at Gamma a couple days ago where he was explaining to me in detail the way, like they have the equipment. When you make a plastic miniature, I literally don't have any plastic miniatures in front of me here. How's that? It's crazy. Anyway, you make a normal plastic miniature. Okay, let me back up. You make a metal miniature or a resin miniature. You take a sculpt that you've made in something or you, whatever, and then you pour liquid rubber around it. And then you cut that apart and pop that that master out. And then you pour metal or resin into this mold or you spin cast it or whatever. And you pop out the models. That's how normal models are made in metal and resin. In plastic, the mold is metal. So you can't put molten metal over the top of your, your that will just destroy everything. It will be very bad. So what they're doing instead, and this is the way that metal molds are made, is that you have two halves of the mold that are designed. And then you have a like a robot finger kind of with a drill bit on it that comes down to an incredibly tiny little point that's covered in diamond dust. And it literally grinds out each side from the inside of the mold. So when you get a plastic mold, like the two pieces of the metal come together, hot plastic gets injected in there, 
and then the mold pulls apart and a piece of plastic falls out into a bin and they do it over and over and over and over again for you know zillions of times or whatever. But the plastic mold, the reason they're so expensive, sorry, the plastic, the metal mold, the reasons they're so expensive is because of that process where the little tiny robot fingers have to get in there and grind every... So when you're thinking of like a, a chaos marine or chaos whatever, and they're covered in like really pointy spikes, to get that point to be so pointy, the little tiny drill bit that has to get into the very end to make it so that it's so tiny so that when plastic gets up in there that it's very sharp and it pokes you when you're holding it, that's a, a big process. He's doing all that himself. Like he has bought the equipment to do the plastic injection molding. He has bought the equipment to make the molds. They're not using steel, they're using aluminum, but still it's a whole thing. And it's 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 risky in my opinion, but he's he was explaining to me the software layer that had to go between this and that and do all this kind of stuff and they've been working on this. He's been working on it for like 2-3 years. Um and allegedly they're going to be start they're going to I think crowdfund it in the summer and then the stuff will get shipped towards the end later part of the year. But yeah, it's going to be plastic injection molding like in-house, which is amazing. So um, it'll be very interesting to see how that works out. Um, let's see here. Eisenhorn's face is paralyzed. I don't think any actor wants to play him. They wouldn't be able to, to emote. I mean, he kind of did that in The Witcher. Like he was scowling a lot. So I don't know. It wouldn't be too bad. We actually, when we went to see Dune yesterday, there was a uh, there was a trailer for a Henry Cavill movie called The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Affairs or something like that. And um, it's like a World War II movie. And there was like these, there's just all these bad guys who were basically, it was kind of like the Suicide Squad, but for World War II and it allegedly really happened or whatever. And in that, he kind of smiles a lot and even like sticks his tongue out and is just like sort of like kind of crazy eyed and stuff like that. And it looks weird on him. Like as Superman, he's kind of stoic generally. Like there's a grin once in a while, but that's about it. And as the Witcher, he's very stoic, you know, and scowly a lot and very little in the way of grinning and as, um, you know, other stuff. So I don't think it would be a big stretch for him to be able to pull that off in my opinion. Zeogenesis, yes, that's the name of the the game coming out soon that I'm I'm interested in. That's like literally the only demo that I'm signed up for for Adepticon. <laughs> Halo, I am behind. Yeah, they just announced uh, Mantic just announced Halo. I forget what they're calling it, Halo something or other, but it's they just announced it like the week before Gamma. A portable mold maker costs three hundred fifty dollars, and a desktop plastic injector costs three hundred fifty dollars. It must not be making a metal mold for three hundred and fifty dollars. Heck, if they can, if I can get a machine that makes a mold that I can make a miniature out of, like certain very simple molds, I could see easy. But if you want it to go, like, yeah, I don't know, I'll have to get into that. Maybe I'll start making my own plastic miniatures. If there's, I mean, I, I got seven hundred bucks, probably. Yeah, probably. Um, Seocast is pretty neat tech for doing molds and a lot cheaper. Well, in comparison to traditional methods, Seocast is cool. Seocast costs hundred thousand dollars, roughly eighty to hundred thousand dollars, depending on how fancy the machine is, from what I understand. Which is cool, but you are actually plastic injection molding into a rubber mold. It's not a metal mold, and the molds cost. I remember being told the molds cost about three hundred bucks. So, um, which is way cheaper than how much metal molds usually cost. But yeah, so. The downside I keep hearing about CoCast a little bit is just that sometimes the machines are hard to keep running. They can break down a little bit. And the CoCast people are kind of being a tiny bit proprietary with the um, the plastic. Like you're supposed to buy it from them or whatever. I don't know. But uh, Did you like Dune Part 2? I want to see it. Yeah, it was good. Event Horizon is a great pseudo 40K movie. I keep hearing that, and I've seen it years and years and years and years ago. Sort of. Like, the only thing about it is that it kind of travels through the warp. But otherwise, it doesn't come across, at least in my mind, as being 40K. But I know what you mean. Are you familiar with Kinsmart Toys? They're common at CVS. No. I think we have a CVS here in town. Uh, I think I've only been to it once. <laughs> 
I've been collecting them for vehicle scatter terrain because it's perfect scale for large scale minis. Huh, no kidding. Uh, I'm still building Gaslands vehicles because it's so much fun and I have various sponsors I can build teams for and a war rig. Nice. Is that a working virtual boy? Uh, last I looked, yes. I don't, I haven't turned it on in a long time, but it, it did used to work like not that long ago. I heard of that movie. I wonder if it's a movie based off of the penal battalions that served in World War II. Might be, yeah. Still looking for just the right tractor trailer model to build my war rig for Gaslands. That Henry Cavill movie should be about the famous Saint Nazir raid. It has its own Wikipedia entry. Check it out. Hmm, it could be. Like I said, they said it's based off of like real events or something, but I don't know much about it. One of the first British commando operations, if I direct, remember correctly. I know it's either produced or directed by Guy Ritchie, so it's going to have a you know a vibe to it to some degree for sure. I feel like I'm a little too bright now. Nope, that's the wrong way. That's too little. There we go. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I um, Right now, my plans for Adepticon, so I have things I have to get done. I've made myself a list. Um, I am currently working on the terrain for um, Tanks for the Apocalypse. So we're going to be running three three-foot by three-foot tables for Tanks for the Apocalypse. I have ordered and received the gaming mats i ordered them from frontline gaming they were the ones that had like a design that i thought would work best it's kind of a concrete busted up sort of ground you know three foot by three foot uh they showed up just before i left to go to gamma so those are uh done we got that stuff ready to go and then i had my good friend dave 3d print me a bunch of terrain um that is all kind of world war ii ruinsy looking stuff so i've got I think it's a total of 27 pieces. I think it's nine separate pieces three times. Math checks out at least. Um, so there's a big piece. It's probably 18 inches across or long by maybe, I don't know, eight inches wide. And it was one, two, three. It was like three or four pieces. I think four pieces. So it's like two base pieces that had to get stuck together and they had pins and holes to stick together. And then there's the, on one end, there's this building and then there's another part that went on top of that and another part went on top of that. So it's like one, two, three, four. I think that's right. So um, I had to put those together. All the rest of the parts are all kind of staying alone by themselves. Nothing else had to be constructed except for the big, huge kind of centerpiece. So, um, so some of the pieces are quite small. So it's like, you know, nine is like, oh my God, nine pieces of train. Some of them are kind of tiny, so it's not that big of a deal. But uh, it took a long time to get that stuff printed because I think the biggest piece on his printer, and he runs a Bamboo Labs uh, FDM printer, which is a very fast FDM printer. The longest print run on one of them was, I think, 26 hours. So, yeah. Um, but so that's all taken care of. He delivered all that stuff. Uh, I don't know, three, four days before I left for um, Gamma. And I did get to prime them all. There was a day where it was real warm and I got to go out there and give them a good quick prime so that they've got a nice base to kind of hold on to paint and stuff like that. And then I put them in the garage and then I took them out of the garage yesterday and I started airbrushing to basically find all the spots the primer didn't get with the rattle can and kind of prime that all black. And then I started going through and doing some of the grays and all that stuff. And like I mentioned earlier, I ran through an entire bottle of um, Crow Hue from uh, Army Painter Air. And so I had to go get another one. Uh, luckily, the, there's a local store here that carries the the um, Army Painter paints, the um, air paints. There's two stores that carry Army Painter, but only one of them carries the air paints rack. So I did that. Um, my plan is, is probably tomorrow to do some more. Basically, I'm just going to be doing a lot of airbrushing until I get to the, uh, dry brushing part. And then there's just going to be a little bit of detail here and there, not a ton. So I should be able to get through the stuff relatively quickly, but then I have this other kind of secret project that I need to get finished that you guys will find out about at Adepticon. And then I also need to figure out what equipment I'm going to be bringing because, on Thursday morning of the convention, we're going to shoot some interviews uh, for the factory team. 
So me, Sam, Eric, and Phil, we're going to basically be kind of filming some footage that we can then send over to Denmark and they can use it in promotional stuff and things like that. And, um, but we're doing it at Adepticon. And so I'm bringing cameras and lights and microphones and backdrops and all that shenanigans. So I got to figure all that out, what I'm going to bring. So I don't forget to bring something, you know, kind of crucial and go from there. Um, so that's another thing I got to get done. And then, like I said, I got to, you know, make sure I get some snacks and things like that to take along too. So there's that, but I'm going to have, I don't know what, 10, 11 days to hopefully get that done. So it should be okay. Um, let's see here. Where was I? Um, I always thought that Riddick borrowed some stuff from 40k, the second one. Oh, for sure. It did it did have that vibe, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. One of the first British commando operations, yep. Uh scale, uh Halo Flashpoint. I rewatched Dune, the 1984 movie. I know it's dated, but I still dig it. It's pretty crazy. Uh, but I know what you mean. CO cast is hundred K and the machine still isn't yours. There's also the supply issue around the thermo nylon polymer as a proprietary material. Yeah, I can understand that. Just watch The Covenant from Guy Ritchie, and that's really good. I don't think I've seen that. I can't imagine Modifius won't try to get a Dune minis game out there. Sounds like it's kind of in their wheelhouse. Yeah, I could see that. I saw another trailer for the Fallout TV show, and I'm, I'm getting more and more interested in checking that out. So the Cavill movie about the Operation Postmaster, but with creative liberties to put it mildly? I guess. I don't Yeah, I don't know much about it. I just saw a trailer for it in the movie yesterday. Any other games you're interested in trying a demo of this here at Depticon? Um, it's usually stuff that takes me by surprise. Like the Zeo Genesis stuff, I happen to be looking through the um, event calendar when they first announced, you know, hey, the event calendar is now available for registering stuff. And I saw that in there and I was like, oh, I would like to sign up for that. And that's literally the only thing I signed up for. Um, so, yeah, but I, there's always I always come across something that I want to try out. I just haven't I don't I don't expect anything else other than that right now. But I'm sure there's something for sure. Um, Sim 25, how are you doing? I use a big porter cable pancake compressor. It's okay. Do you have a compressor you recommend? Anything less noisy? For airbrushing, I started with a regular like hardware store, like bright red compressor as well that was like completely silent as you were using the, the air out of the tank. But then as soon as the tank hit a certain level, then the compressor would kick in and it was scary because it was like very loud very quickly. Um the airbrush compressor I use is made by a company called Sparmax, S-P-A-R-M-A-X-X -X maybe. I don't know if there's one X or two Xs, but Sparmax. Uh, I think I have a TC2000, I think is what I have, something like that. Um, and it's it, it's fine. I like it just fine. Um, it's not, I guess, cheap particularly, but something like that that is kind of automatic. And when I say automatic, like it doesn't really do anything or make any noise until I start spraying and then it kicks in. And it's also kind of quiet. Like real airbrush compressors, one of the biggest benefits to using a real airbrush compressor as opposed to a, you know, like a pancake compressor or like a compressor for pumping up tires or whatever that kind of thing, is that they're generally quite quiet in comparison. A normal hardware grade compressor will work just fine. Sometimes you have to get some special connections to make it attached to your airbrush and things like that, different adapters and whatnot, but it's not too bad. Um, and it's usually a good idea also to maybe think about having a moisture trap, but I think it's honestly always good to have a moisture trap, but um, it's the noise. Uh, airbrush compressor is considerably cheaper or quieter than a regular, you know, compressor you might have in your, in your garage. Um, Scratch built some buildings and other terrain pieces for Gaslands, but 72nd scale, 78th, and HO scale works well. Sure. I mean, the difference between 72nd scale and 78th scale is barely any difference. So, yeah. Modifius announced a Mass Effect game. I'm so excited. Nice. 
Good morning, Google Adam. I've uh, never been at Adepticon, but I'm curious, are there any narrative events or just competitive tournaments? I don't know. I think there are. I know that at Las Vegas Open, there were some narrative events, and that place is generally known to be a very competitive kind of tournament-oriented thing. But when I was at LVO, uh, with the, not everybody from Factory Team was, was there. Uh, Eric wasn't able to make it, but Sam was there and Phil was there. Phil's the competitive gamer, but he was not playing in the 40K championship. He was playing in the narrative uh, event. So... I'm assuming there's probably some sort of narrative event. I would just go to the website and look for their event info, and it will show you all the different events that are available and stuff like that. And if they have a cost and like if there are any seats available and you know, that kind of stuff, that all that information can be there. Cautiously excited for that new Fallout show too. Once they introduced Walton Goggins as a chem addicted guy, I was sold. That guy is really entertaining to watch if you know anything he's in. Oh yeah, he was astounding in... Um, justified for sure i mean that's yeah gaslands cars are roughly 64th scale so larger than 10 millimeter 20 millimeters about right interesting uh modifius needs to clean up the homeworld release first it's pretty close to the source material but it has a lot of rough edges i don't know anything about that game i never even really played i think i played the actual original video game and the original homeworld like once like on somebody else's computer and i was like huh and then i just never it didn't ever strike me spar max gear is good gear it's also the only brand i can get locally hmm i've never used like a badger compressor or an iowata compressor spar max spar max is the only one i've had that's an actual airbrush compressor you know sorry i'm late that's okay Hope you can cover the new dungeons and drag oh, no new dungeons and lasers cave terrain also have you heard about tabletop halo game um, I got to paint one of the Halo models at a, at the Gamma trade show that I was just at. Um, it ended up in a box of models that we got from Mantic. They loaned us a box of models for, so we could do painting demos and stuff like that. And there were some Halo models in the bottom of it that they didn't realize. Um, and there was one in there that was primed and I painted it. Not well, I just kind of slopped like green metallic paint on it and then threw a brown wash over it during the one of the demo nights. But I did mess with it some. Um, nice looking model. Um, but I don't know much about the actual game, so I don't know a ton about the game. Probably learn a little bit about Adept at Adepticon, potentially. Um, Dungeons and Lasers Caves Terrain. I think I saw some pictures of it somewhere. Twitter? Facebook? I don't know where I saw it, but I did see some pictures of the Caves Terrain. I like the Archon Studios, which is, I think, also Dungeons and Lasers. I think it's the same company. I like the stuff that they did, the urban stuff that they did. I did the Kickstarter for that a number of years ago, and that terrain is awesome. I have it half painted in my basement right now. I've, like, I've got nine pieces built together. I've got them on MDF bases. The MDF bases were were textured. I have spray primed everything. I've gone through and painted all the buildings on the outside for the most part, all gray. I've even gone in and done some um, stenciled graffiti and some other stuff. But there's detail stuff that I need to do and everything, and I'm really looking forward to doing that because it's great terrain and I really like it. Um, a viewer, uh, uh, BF Bulldog, uh, also sent me some that he wasn't going to be using because I could. That's the thing that drives me a little nuts about it is if you didn't do the Kickstarter, you just can't go to the website and say, I would like to buy some, please, at full price. And they're like, well, we don't have any. <sighs> I had a conversation with a couple different people about this at Gamma. If you are going to make a Kickstarter crowdfund of any kind, it should be to start that line, not just produce and then dump. You know what I mean? Like, okay, I'm going to have this crowdfund out there. And we're going to make X amount of this game, and I'm going to produce exactly how many I need, and then that's it. Done. It's nothing more. You know? Um, Grimdark Compendium is a YouTube channel that you might want to check out if you like painting Grimdark stuff. Last year, early part of 2023, he did a crowdfund, not through Game4 or anybody, not, or sorry, not through um, GameFound or Kickstarter or anybody else. It was just his own kind of crowdfund. And you prepaid because he was going to start making enamel washes that he was going to sell. Now, what he did not do is he did not just, you know, take the money, order that many enamel washes from some manufacturer, get them produced, ship them, and then boom, done with it. What he did was he took the money that he got 
for those enamel washes, bought the equipment to help him bottle it, label it, all that fancy shenanigans stuff, and started a business. So as a person who supported the Kickstarter, well, again, it's just a crowdfund. As a person who pay prepaid, I got my stuff just before I went to Gamma. But right now, if you go to uh, grimdarkcompendium.com, I think is the email or the, the URL. I'm not 100% sure. And this is not sponsored. Like I said, I bought the stuff myself. But if you were to go there because you were interested in checking out their enamel washes and being able to buy them, it's it, the brand is called Villainy Inc. I -N -Q, or I -N -K, not I-N-C or Q. Uh, Villainy Inc. Um, you can buy that stuff because basically he took that money and started a business as opposed to just made a product and then went on to the next product. You know what I mean? I prefer that. So I'm a little bummed that Archon Studios, that you can't buy the urban set of terrain if you didn't get it during that particular Kickstarter or whatever. So I wish that they would do that because it's really great terrain. Anyway, where was I? What was I talking about? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's pretty cool stuff. Uh, oh, yeah, Dungeon of Labor's ca uh, Caves ter terrain. So hopefully, like, if you don't get it during the, 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 the crowdfund for the Caves terrain, maybe it'll be available later. But I'm, I have a suspicion they'll just be like, well, you didn't get it, so you didn't get it. I, don't, I hate that. Um, there are some narrative events at Adepticon. I'm signed up with a narrative event for Warcry. Nice. That sounds like fun. There are tons of narrative events at Adepticon. I know of Battletech, Horus Heresy, Kill Team, Mordheim, and Travel, uh, Travel, Marvel Crisis Protocol, uh, Lunchtime Rainbow at the top of my head. Nice. Homeworld is a God level video game. See, that's maybe my problem because I'm not God level for sure. Just finished my Forbidden Psalm campaign, working on minis for the expansions. Nice. Thanks again for another couple hours of hobby chat and inspiration. Absolutely. Our sail power game is a narrative event as we maintain a persistent world throughout the weekend. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's a neat concept. I like that. I've got an Iowata compressor. Works very well, not loud. It was an investment, though. Yeah, like a really good uh, compressor will last you for a long time. I've had that Sparmax, Sparmax now for probably, oh, I bet eight years at least, if not a little bit longer. Uh, but it still works, knock on wood. If I can remake the teams from red versus blue with the Halo game, I could get into that. I would bet you probably should be able to, I would think, yeah. Um, I will be expecting a booty video of your convention acquisitions when you return. Uh, yeah, I'll probably do one from Adepticon because I usually come home with a lot more stuff from Adepticon because I'm not flying. Like, this stuff fit in my luggage pretty easy because it's thin, you know what I mean? So that wasn't too bad. But... Uh, like, there were other things. Like, I walked by some booth, and they were like, oh, you, are you interested? I mean, if you want, you could take this. I was like, I don't have any room for that in my luggage, but thank you. That's very nice of you. Who was that? I think it was like a piece of terrain or something um, from some company. Anyway, but uh, at Adepticon, yeah, I can load up the car on the way home. There's more room. I never completely filled the car. There's always... And this year, I'm going by myself. I'm not driving with another person, so therefore, I could fill up the, the passenger seat. <laughs> That's fun. Anyway, um, that's why I didn't mind backing War Games Atlantic for the Damned line because they're going to be putting them together. Under yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm eventually going to be getting some of that Damned stuff as well. That's what it's called. I'm not just, you know. Um, because I did the, yeah, I, I, I think I didn't do the initial backing. I did the uh, late pledge thing or whatever they were doing. You're describing the pre-orders for Games Workshop when you've said about the... Yeah, well, lately, yeah, for sure. You're old like me, very possibly. Companies don't have 30, 60, 90 day and three and five year plans. It's what you do in the bank today. Start new money maker in the morning, sad with the business. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it's a better idea to keep planning. I believe the Archon Studios shop is up and running in Europe and I have bought some. I You can buy some of their stuff, but the urban stuff, when I went and looked, you could buy like... The Ruins, which was the very first set that they did, or the Gothic stuff or whatever. There's a couple different flavors of the terrain that you could buy. And again, maybe this has changed in the last, I don't know, nine months to a year. But when I was like, when I got my stuff and I built my nine pieces and I was like, I want more of this stuff, I went to the website to order it and you couldn't get any more of the urban stuff. And I don't know if you still can. If you can, then great. Um, awesome. But I don't know if you can. I should probably take a look. Dwarven Forge is similar. Everything's always out of stock. Yeah. Uh, Goblin Brain Booty. Yay. 
afternoon from Virginia. I'm currently kit bashing my first custom 40K tank. Nice. I've enjoyed my Grex airbrush compressor. I talked to the guy from Grex a little bit while I was at the uh, at the show, too. He stopped by our, uh, the Army Painter booth. Seems like a nice guy. I do enjoy videos featuring Adam's booty. Well, that's maybe a little weird. I don't know. It's, it's fine. Um, cool. Well, everybody, um, I will be... Let's see here. So I think the next Every Other Sunday show, does it happen technically during Adepticon, which may be a screw-up, and I may, well, I'm not a screw-up, but it may just mean that I'm going to have to um, probably push it back a little bit. Yeah, so the next one would be technically while I'm at Adepticon, and it will be on a Sunday, which means I'll be getting out of my hotel room, so I won't really be able to do, because like checkout would be now at 11, and so I won't really be able to pull that off from the hotel room, unfortunately. So we'll probably have to be an extra week or something like that. That being said... If the internet holds up in the hotel like it did last year, I will at some point do a live stream while walking around on the floor of the um, convention. I don't know if I'll do it on YouTube or if I'll do it on Twitch. I think I did it on YouTube last year. I think it makes more sense to do it on YouTube because then it lasts forever as opposed to Twitch where it only lasts for like 60 days. So I'll probably try to do that at some point. Um Again, if the internet holds up. It's all about the Wi-Fi there, really. So um, keep an eye out for that. If you follow me on Twitch, I'll post about it there. If you don't follow me on Twitch, uh, you could still follow me on Twitch. Um, some people call Twitch X. They're wrong. But anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, I hope you folks have a good rest of your weekend. I'm going to be, uh, like I said, doing a little bit of work more this afternoon on terrain. And uh, then the rest of the weekend, well, the rest of the weekend will be that and doing some errands for my mom and having a meeting tonight with Vince, like we usually do on Sundays, which we couldn't last week because I was traveling. It's a whole thing. We'll be we'll be having a good time. Um, and then some of you I'll see at Adepticon in about uh, 10 or 11 days, tops. So uh, hopefully we'll see you folks there. And for those of you who can't make it, keep an eye out on social media and all that kind of stuff. And... Um, just have a good time and stay safe. And uh, thanks for coming by and thanks for watching.